What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another highly combustible reaction. We're going to be jumping into something kind of cool. A little bit more history. Why the overshadowed Dutch war effort in the Pacific deserves recognition from World War II. Hey, this was coming at us from the front. If you guys enjoy it, most certainly go show the front some love. Give them a like. Give them a subscribe. Check out some of their other content. For sure, go show the original poster content. Without them, we wouldn't have anything to react to in the first place. You left it on the quest form. I'm here with it. Let's jump into it. Let's check it out together. Let's see what we got. Let's learn something. With the Netherlands getting stomped by Germany early in the Second World War, the contribution of the Dutch to the Allied cause can sometimes go a little under the radar. In reality, the Dutch pressed the fight in the Netherlands and elsewhere in the world, operating under commands based in other Allied countries. The Dutch Royal Navy in particular was a formidable military branch with a proud, deeply rooted history, and it didn't just kill over and die when Dutch ports fell into German hands. In fact, the Dutch Royal Navy fought like hell in the Pacific War. The Dutch Royal Navy and Dutch navies in general have fought like hell forever. Especially in the waters surrounding modern day Indonesia. In this video, we're going to provide an overview of the Dutch Royal Navy's involvement in World War II, focusing mostly on its exploits in the Pacific. In a classic Der Führer play by Adolf Hitler, he drove his war machine into the Netherlands on the 10th of May 1940, forcing the Dutch military surrender just five days later. Rather than simply gifting them to Hitler, the Dutch Royal Navy moved as many of its naval vessels out of their port as they could, sending them to relative safety in Britain. That's smart. Yo, don't give this guy any of our stuff. Send it over there. For the rest of the war, that portion of the Dutch Navy operated alongside the Allies around Europe, participating in the evacuation at Dunkirk and the Normandy landings, That's to name just awesome. a couple of operations. Of course, empires were all the rage back then, and the Dutch were totally aboard that train with their rule on what was then the Dutch East Indies, and is now Indonesia. In defense of the Dutch East Indies, four Dutch cruisers, seven Dutch destroyers, 15 Dutch submarines and a whole lot of Dutch ovens were stationed in the Javan city of Sur. I know he didn't just say a whole lot of Dutch ovens. That caught me off guard. I'm not even gonna lie. I'm sitting here listening to what kind of cruisers and what kind of battleships there were. I know he did not just throw Dutch ovens in there. In Dutch submarines and a whole lot of Dutch ovens were stationed in the Javan city of Surabaya. The Dutch also maintained a force of at least five submarines in Western Australia. While the Dutch Navy was involved in quite a few scuffles in the Dutch East Indies campaign and beyond, we're going to keep our focus on some hot submarine action at the start of the campaign, the Battle of the Java Sea and the Battle of the Sunda Strait. Just before World War II kicked off, a Dutch admiral by the name of Konrad Helfrich was put in charge of all Dutch naval forces in the Dutch East Indies. Shortly after the Pacific War got off to an explosive start with the attack on Pearl Harbor, Helfrich was ordered to stick it hard and fast to the Japanese, especially Japanese supply lines. Makes sense. Making good use of his Western Australia based subs, he sunk 54 Japanese vessels in the first 54 days of the Pacific War. Holy sh! Woo! 54 in the first 54 days? That's a pretty good track record. You're off to a damn good start. Sunk 54 Japanese vessels in the first 54 days of the Pacific War, earning himself the nickname of Shippaday Helfrich. To put that in perspective, <laughs> he sunk more Japanese vessels in the first few weeks than the British Navy and the American Navy combined. Early in That's January 1942, intense. Allied Command gave birth to the American British Dutch Australian Command, or ABDICOM, the supreme command for all Allied forces in the Southwest Pacific. While command of the naval component of Abdecom, Abdefloat, went first to an American admiral, it passed to our Dutch buddy Helfrich on the 12th of February, just in time for the hands down most disastrous naval battle of the Dutch East Indies campaign. Operating under the command of Admiral Helfrich, 
Dutch Rear Admiral Karel Dorman was put in charge of an Abdefloat force, which included most of the Dutch Royal Army's warships, as well as some British, American, and Australian vessels. Dorman, while not super keen on Helflik's balls to the wall strategy himself, was tasked with leading an almost kamikaze headfirst offensive against the Imperial Japanese Navy. On the 17th of February 1942, Dorman's strike force, composed of two heavy cruisers, three light cruisers and nine destroyers, departed Surabaya, Java. His objective was to intercept and destroy a Japanese convoy. As Dorman engaged the Japanese Navy in the Java Sea, he learned very quickly that he was hilariously outgunned. Each time the Dutch-led strike force attempted to penetrate the Japanese convoy, the convoy's escort force would lay absolute waste to the Allied ships, all but obliterating the strike force within the span of a day. Wow. Late in the night, Dorman's flagship, the HNLMS Dorata, was struck by a long lance torpedo and dressed in flames. The ship's electrical systems were char-grilled, and the crew were unable to stop Dorata from burning and flooding. While Dorman had the privilege of being rescued, he decided to go down with his ship instead, which sunk below the waves around three hours after getting the torpedo hit taking 367 sailors and Dorman with it. The few warships which survived tried to flee, some to other places in the Dutch East Indies, some to Australia, and some all the way to Ceylon. Unfortunately, most of them were destroyed as they limped away, as was the case for one American heavy cruiser, one Australian light cruiser, and one Dutch destroyer in what came to be known as the Battle of Sunder Strait. This is a whole different kind of warfare. Like even, you know, the whole ground warfare is one thing, but when you're floating on an endless, vast sea, and there are just rounds being thrown your way and stuff exploding, you don't have very many places to run in the first place without just running right into the water. Like, that is some terrifying battles. That is something that I'm not about to be a part of. Like, legitimately, that's why I was like, nope, no Navy for this guy. I don't want to be on the open sea firing things at people and having them fire things back at me. There's only a limited amount of space that they have to hit before you get hit. I think it's very, very intriguing, but also very strange that there really were captains that chose to go down with the ship instead of going back. Like... I mean, at that point, the only person you really screwed over was yourself. But uh, in some ways, I understand it. at the same time, the whole honor thing. And yes, captains are supposed to go down with their ships, so they say. But in some, on the other hand, I'm just like, you are crazy if you think I'm going to stay inside of a burning boat while it sinks to Davy Jones's locker. This whole thing absolutely done brilliantly. I love the voiceover. I love everything. Go show the front some love. Don't forget... Don't forget, don't forget, it's down inside the description. Wounded in the Battle of the Java Sea, the American USS Houston, Australian HMAS Perth, and Dutch HNLMS Evertsen were giving it legs through the Sunda Strait between Java and Sumatra, having fallen under the de facto command of Royal Australian Navy officer Hector Waller. He did quite well considering the hand that was dealt to him. As a result of poor intel, his tiny ragtag force stumbled upon a Japanese invasion convoy of more than 50 transport ships escorted by at least a dozen warships. Surrounded, Waller had no choice but to go down fighting, emptying every shell aboard the HMAS port. Holy crap! In the chaos which ensued, every shell. Japanese friendly fire sunk a troop transport ship, wounded three more transports, and sunk a minesweeper. Of course, Houston, Perth, and Everston went down too, taking over 1,000 sailors, including Waller, with them. The 675 Allied sailors who survived the Battle of Sunda Strait were taken as prisoners of war. All in all, 10 of the 14 warships which entered the Battle of the Java Sea were destroyed during the battle or while trying to flee it. The Japanese took the island of Java shortly after. By the 1st of March, Abdicom was dissolved, and the enemy had a firm grip on the Dutch East Indies overall, winning the campaign on the 9th of March 1942. While the Dutch Navy's surface vessels were all but obliterated, its submarines were able to get out of Java and continue operations in the Pacific. Hunting down Japanese tankers out of Western Australia, 
The Dutch became known as the fourth ally in the Allied campaigns in the Pacific and Indian Ocean, along with the Aussie. Even when they ain't got nothing left but their ships, but they ain't got nothing left but their submarines, they kept fighting. Kiwis and Yanks. The Dutch submarine HNLMS Zwaardvis was the most successful of these submarines, sinking a range of Axis vessels, including but not limited to Japanese transports, mine layers, and guard boats and the German submarine U-168, which it torpedoed in October 1944. That's really not Java. a place I want to be. While this was by no means a comprehensive list of every scrap the Dutch Royal Navy took part of in the Pacific, it might now be obvious to you that the Dutch fought like hell. But we're interested to hear what you think. Can you think of any other battles the Dutch Royal Navy was involved in in the Pacific? What about elsewhere in the Second World War? Please let us know all of that and more in the comment section below. And just before you click off to the next recommended video guys, make sure you check out our brand new channel called The Braved, where we go deeper into history to find some of the most badass individuals from all different areas. Okay, that sounds all awesome. In a high, high quality format. So if you enjoy this channel, I know you'll enjoy that one. And if you're more so into music, check out our Relax Jack channel, where we use a lot of the music posted there on this channel in the background of our videos. And if you just want to join us in our wider community, check us out on our Facebook, Instagram, and Discord. Anyways, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you learned something new. We most certainly did learn something new. If you guys enjoyed it, like I said, go show the front some love. It was most certainly interesting. It was uh, important. Uh, very something that maybe we wouldn't have known about had we not run into this video something we may not have ever learned so very very cool indeed go show them some love if you like to hit the like button if you decide to hit the dislike button check out the other video up there or one of these guys up here till the next one highly possible you guys be happy healthy safe love you to the moon and back peace